Hello everyone. My name is Wenliang Dai. Welcome to our presentation. Today, I'm happy to share our work accepted at the AACL 2020 with you, the modality transferable emotion embeddings for low resource multimodal emotion recognition. And my co-authors are Zihan Liu, Tie Zheng Yu, and Pascal Fong. So here is the outline of today's presentation. I will first introduce the background of our work, and then I will talk about the model architecture, the experimental settings, results, and analysis. Finally, I will make a conclusion to our paper. So what is multimodal emotion recognition? It is a task to recognize human emotions with multiple modalities, and for example, the visual, acoustic, and the textual. Here is an example. As you can see here, uh, different modalities provide the supplementary information to make the uh, classification more accurate. There are quite a few challenges exist. The first is how to utilize well the multimodal data. First is uh, intramodal uh, dynamics, which means how to process th the data from each single modality well. And the second one is called intermodal uh, dynamics, which means how to measure the interaction between different modalities. And also the representation learning, the fusion of uh, different modalities, and also the alignment among modalities. The second problem is the data scarcity problem. A multimodal data is very hard to come by because in most of the time, people do not show their emotions. They are just being neutral. And even if they show their emotions, there is a uh, more common emotion like happy and less common emotion like uh, surprised or fear. So this problem is even more serious for the low resource emotion categories. And also the collecting and the labeling the data, multimodal data are quite expensive. Uh, here is our work. We propose to use the emotion embedding to capture the emotion categories of the input data and the relationship between emotion labels, uh, which means that we use embeddings to, to represent the uh, target emotions. As you can see on the right hand side, we use the pre-trained GLOVE embedding as the emotion embeddings in the textual space. Uh, GLOVE contains rich uh, semantics of each word. For the other two modalities, we have two mapping functions that is learned end to end to map the emotion embedding from the textual space to the other uh, spaces. To measure, uh, because uh, emotion recognition is a multi label problem in nature, as humans can have multiple emotions at the same time, measure the relationship between emotion categories is quite important for us, and it's, it is very helpful to improve the performance. For example, you can see the woman is both happy and surprised. The, the vector representation of this data point is very close to both happy and surprised in the vector space. And for unseen emotion categories that is that are not in the training set at all, because they also have the pre-trained embedding the textual space with our already learned mapping functions, they can have emotion embeddings in all modalities. And in this way, we already gain some knowledge about the unseen emotions. So here is the architecture of our model. First, let's introduce the emotion embeddings. For the text, we have the number of k uh, embeddings from extracted from the pre-trained globe. And for the visual and acoustic, with our two mapping functions, we can transform the et to the other uh, vector space. Uh, so for each modality, it, there is a sequence of data. To extract a single vector representation of each modality of the input data, we use the bidirectional LSTM. Uh, 
the output vector of at the last time step is seen as the representation of the whole sequence. So here, uh, for each sequence, we get RV, RT, and RA for visual, textual, and acoustic modalities, respectively. And for the modality fusion and prediction, because we will already have the emotion embedding and the vector representation for each modality, we can do a simple dot product attention calculation, and we can have the unnormalized uh, uh, attention scores ST, SA, and SV here. And to do the modality fusion, we we use the weighted sum. The WT, WA, and WV are all scalars, and they represent the importance of uh, each modality and on top of that we apply the sigmoid function and uh, with a preset uh, threshold value we can uh, classify the data point to either 0 or 1 on each emotion category we optimize the model with the binary entropy cross entropy loss in an end-to-end -end manner Okay, for zero short emotion prediction, uh, as already explained in the intuition example, ideally our model is able to directly adapt to a new unseen emotion based on its embedding. Uh, we first have its pre trained textual embedding etk plus one, and with the two learned mapping functions, we can also have the evk plus one and the e8k plus one. And after that, uh, we can uh, simply do the classification just like the trained source emotions. Uh, and for the few short uh, emotion prediction, in our assumption, we assume 1% of the positive training samples in the new unseen emotions are available. We propose two few short fine tuning settings. The first setting is just normal fine tuning. Uh, we first train the model on the source emotions and then we fine tune it on the target uh, unseen 1% emotion data. And the second way is a continual learning method called uh, gradient apothotic uh, memory, GEM. It can prevent our model from forgetting previously learned knowledge. So for GEM, as shown in the lower part of this uh, slide, it keeps a small number of uh, samples n from the source emotions, and a constraint is applied, as shown in the formula here. Uh, it pre it uh, at a limitation on the gradient to prevent the loss on the stored samples n from increasing when the model learns the new target emotion. <coughs> Now here's the experimental settings. We validate our model on two different data sets. The first one is the CMU MOSI, which is one of the largest multimodal data sets for both emotion recognition and sentiment analysis. And the second one is EMOCA, which is also a very famous uh, data set for multimodal emotion recognition. And for both data sets, we use the extra extracted feature downloaded from the CMU uh, multimodal SDK. <coughs> Following the previous paper, we used this evaluation matrix. Uh, for CMU MOSI, we used the weighted accuracy and also the AUC score. And for EMOCAP, we used the accuracy and also the AUC score. <coughs> uh, for baselines, First, we include two weak baselines, the early fusion LSTM and the late fusion LSTM. And also for a stronger baseline, we include the previous state-of-the-art models for both datasets. <coughs> and here is the result on the CMU MOSI dataset. As you can see from the last row of the table, our model surpassed the previous weak and strong baseline by a very large margin. 
uh, there, in terms of average weighted accuracy, there is almost 4% absolute uh, improvement. And we observe a similar trend on the EMOCAP dataset. The zero-shot and few-shot learning performance is also quite impressive. Uh, we compare our model with the previous uh, baselines on this zero-shot and few-shot. Although the, the baseline cannot do zero-shot uh, because those part of uh, parameter parameters for the unseen motion is not learned, right? So it's basically similar to random guess. And But for our model, uh, benefits from the uh, emotion embedding and also the mapping function, it can have uh, better performance and better generalization ability to the unseen emotions. Uh, you can see from the performance numbers, it's quite better than the random guess. And if we can have 1% of the data for few short, we can further gain a large improvement uh, based on the zero short learning. And the best performing fine tuning method, as we introduced before, is the continual learning method. It can uh, keep the model from forgetting the previous learned knowledge. And here we analyze the effects of the emotion embedding. <coughs> uh, so our I think our model benefits greatly from the emotion embedding because it can model the relationships between emotion categories, and this is very important for uh, the multi-label task. <clears throat> and in the figure below, we show the Euclidean distance between each pair of uh, emotion embeddings. As you can see, more similar uh, categories have smaller Euclidean distance and uh, vice versa. This trend we is also observed uh, in the other uh, modality space, like the acoustic and the visual, which means the learn to mapping function, the, the two mapping function are learned quite well. We also did an ablation study uh, as shown in table 6 and table 5. Compared to single model data, multi model data can provide supplementary information and further improve accuracy on the emotion classification. And in terms of single modality on average, we find that the textual and acoustic are more effective than the visual for this task. And with the learned mapping function, zero short learning on a single modality is even possible. And finally, I want to make a conclusion of our paper. We first uh, introduce simple but very effective end-to-end -end model for the multimodal emotion recognition task. It can learn the relationship between different emotion categories used uh, with the emotion values. And to the best of our knowledge, this paper is the first one to investigate the multimodal emotion recognition in the low resource scenario. Our model can directly adapt to an unseen emotion even if only one modality is available. And from the experimental result, our model achieved state-of-the-art results on most uh, emotion categories on two datasets. And we also provide a thorough analysis on the zero-short and few-short learning. And for future directions, we think improving the pre-trained textual emotion embedding is very essential because it's like an upper bound for all the modality. Okay, thank you very much for listening and feel free to check our code on this link or scan the QR code. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Thank you very much for listening.